Hello everyone, how are you doing today? It's my pleasure to join us, uh, to join everyone with this show today with the attorney Margaret W. Wong, who has a lot of experience working in the immigration field and helping thousands of families every single year for 46 years that she has been working on this field. So thank you so much for joining us today. Please uh, feel free to send your questions regarding to immigration and uh, of course, we are going to have the attorney Margaret W. Wong giving us some answers uh, to every one of us and uh, just clarifying that uh, those questions that you are asking today is only a reference of what's going on, but to give a more detailed answer to your specific case, we need to see your documents, we need to uh, check what's going on with your case and uh, just to have a specific answer for you. So the answers are general, but uh, that gives you a light of um, how everything could be going in your immigration case. Let's welcome the attorney, Margaret W. Wong. Hello, Ms. Wong, how are you doing today? I'm very good, Mr. Juan Carlos, thank you. Thank you so much for having us today, Ms. Wong. And well, I, I would like to start by uh, talking about DACA, which uh, just is facing um, a new lawsuit claiming the uh, the lack of, uh, claiming that it's illegal, that DACA is illegal. <laughs> and I like the way you, when you talk about it, you look at it and think about it. It is, of course, legal. Hundreds and thousands of young people already got DACA. And that's another ploy by the same Trump thing is already you cannot uh, file the new ones. I don't know what these people want, but because the law now is you already have DACA, you can extend it. You can still do parole, but no more new DACA. So right now it's still legal. And I really want people who are listening, if you have family members, if you could vote, a family can vote, tell them they could not vote for um, Mr. Trump. They could not vote for Mr. Trump who hires Mr. Steve Miller. He himself is Jewish. I don't know why he's against immigrants. We cannot have these people continue to run our America. And that's why we came to America. We never expected, like after 50, 60 years of being in America, this would ever happen in my lifetime. It's embarrassing. It's hurtful. It's not right. It's not just. And this is not what America represents. DACA is still legal. It will always be legal un until someone mess with it. If they mess with it, they're going to mess with a lot of people who vote, who would have voted for the Republican Party, but we're going to make sure they no longer vote for you. And you watch me and I will make it happen. I'm just very angry about this. This is not right. This is not why we come to America. And America need to remain the number one in the world. And to be number one, you, keep, you need to keep our young people in America. You need to keep our awesome, awesome foreign born. If you look at Silicon Valley, most of the CEOs, CFOs are mostly all foreign born. If you look at our Fortune 500, Fortune, uh, you know, Smart Inc. Uh, 100, most of them are really started with foreign born. Einstein is a foreign born, you know, Oppenheimer. You know how many foreign born people they hire in that movie? I mean, it's awesome. You look at Barbie, you know, it's all these best selling movies. They all talk about the history and culture of America. We need to continue this. Yeah, thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And uh, also, I have a question. When uh, who files the lawsuits against? Um, immigration benefits like DACA or TPS or... That's a very good question. You are asking about who have standing because, of course, the DACA kids would not file it because they themselves have DACA. So the real question is who could, because in order, so for example, I'm taking this drug, opioid, I am hurt, I'm addicted, so I can sue the government, I can sue the opioid family. So who have standing on this? So normally... You have to have people who 
have standing. So, for example, I'm one of the people who sued the Ohio state because Ohio at one time to be able to vote, anytime you look foreign born, um, and I'm exaggerating it, of course, because I was angry and I'm still angry about that, but we won the lawsuit. So in Ohio, there was a time that if people like us, right, who became citizen a long time ago, but we are foreign born, we look for, we even speak with an accent, Ohio at one time wants us to produce some sort of uh, American citizen, which is totally uncalled for, because if you go to vote, you don't have to bring, you just bring your voter ID or your driver's license, right? You don't have to bring your passport or something to show. But um, so I'm I'm one of those people who have sued, I think in that lawsuit, we have like 50, 60 people. So, um, so these are who have standing is anybody who have been heard like UCLA have standing. UCLA did a lawsuit, and some of my clients belong to that lawsuit. Um, they cannot uh, put people in jail for more than 180 days. So UCLA have public funding to do that. You also, for example, in criminal cases, you have the Innocence Project, who does a lot, like people who are wrongfully accused, set in jail for 40 years. You have the Innocence Project. They have movies about the, the founder and all the lawyers who work there. Um, so these are people, it's people who have standing. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And uh, yeah, well, it's uh, something that people are keeping in mind. Maybe it's the news as well, because I know there are lawsuits again against immigration benefits every single day. Uh, I mean, they are filing lawsuits against those resolutions or executive orders uh, just as happened with DACA or TPS for some countries. Uh, also, now the, the, um, the humanitarian parole for Venezuelans, Nicaraguans, Haitians, and Cubans. There are a lot of lawsuits. So uh, judging by uh, what is going on and the frequency of these lawsuits, what is the average that they could be approving or granting? The average sometimes before. takes years. That's why these are like a lot of times they do a TRO. A TRO could be granted in 15 days. Uh, so these are just TRO, temporary protective orders or temporary orders saying that when the lawsuit is going on, you could stop giving DACA. When the lawsuit is going on, you can stop giving Medicaid, Medicare benefits. And another thing, why lawyers are bringing lawsuits, there's a lot of money to be made in these cases. These are like class action cases. So, for example, we have cases, we have law, uh, lawyers who sue for 601A because it's taking four and a half years. So, all they, they normally charge about 3000 per person. So, for example, we have like we have more than 100 clients, right? So if I, if that law firm is a friend of mine, they'll say, Margaret, do you have any lawyer or clients who just want to pay $3,000? We'll name them in the lawsuit to have standing because they cannot sue themselves. They need other clients who have standing. So I have, for example, I have a client who married an American citizen or green card, I have a 601A pending. If they're willing to pay that law firm, like each person $3,000, so that lawyer would include all these fees into one lawsuit. So that person of standing, because uh, like I won't have standing because I don't have, myself, I don't have a case that I'm fighting a 601A, but I have clients who do. So they do have standing. But you're right, there's a lot of money to be made in these lawsuits, both pro against immigration. And that's why personally, I don't do these lawsuits. It's just, you know, it, you can't, personally, I don't know if I want to profit from human sufferings. You know, that's not nice, I think. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this answer. And we have a lot of questions and we took some time to discuss what's going on in the immigration uh, atmosphere uh, what is going on there? But let's start with a question from our audience. Robin is saying uh, good morning. And the question is, recently I went to renew my driver's license in Texas. Uh, my boyfriend EAD to visa, or, well, I don't know what that BF means, but EAD through visa, valid for four years, 
but they gave me only valid for one year. Have any idea? They are supposed to issue. They either they could be making a mistake or they thought it's automatic one year. Biden started with this about one and a half years ago, saying that if you have not uh, one and Right. If you have not gotten an approval on your work permit and your visa is expiring or your job is expiring or your driver's license expiring, they give you a 540 day. Normally they give you a one year driver's license. Maybe there was a mistake here. If you already got the approval of that work permit, they should give you up to the approval. So C8 is two years. They should give you two years. Uh, C10 is one year. They should give you one year. B, BF probably means boyfriend. Um, no, I think it's bona fide. Or oh, bona fide. Okay. Yes. I oh, think bona it's bona fide. So it could be a U visa. Should be for uh, C fourteen is four years if it's a bona fide ness letter. Okay. Bona fide ness e e a d. So it could be a four year. So I don't know. And now I learned something new in English, which is bona fide. A bona fide ness. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I got that new word. Bona fide ness okay. in marriage cases. Bona fide ness in a widow case. Bona fide ness in a U visa case. It's, it's, it's I think strange. this is a U visa case because yeah. it's a four years yeah. uh, work permit. So I'm learning. Thank you so much, Miss Mo, oh. for all you are teaching me oh, every single you. Wednesday. We're and together Thursday. from our clients. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Wong. Well, Robin, if you need more information, please give us a call. The phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984 is the phone number you need to call in order to talk to the attorney, Margaret W. Hello, lawyer. I am from Honduras. I have a uh, pending asylum since 2016. My younger sister is in Honduras. She works and studies, but is not married and doesn't have any children. She wants to fill out the visa application. Is, is it advisable to be that I have a pending asylum in the United States? That's a very good question. For family we don't ask for your status. The question is, have a visa petition ever been filed for you? The answer is no. Do you intend to work? The answer is no. Do you intend to study? The answer is no. Look at the question. The question is, do you have any immediate relatives in America? But look at it because immediate relatives, technically the immediate relative definition in America is parents, spouse, or child. A lot of people do put brother, but look at that question before you answer. But the IR, immediate relative, means parent, spouse, or child, doesn't include brother. But you could always say, yes, the brother is here, but they do not ask what's his visa status. It's none of her problem because it's only a brother. America is weird in the sense that in your culture and my culture, uh, a whole family includes parents, children over 21, all the in-laws, all the grandparents. But in an American family, Immediate relatives mean parents, spouse, children under 18 or under 21, or only children that's not married. So I have a girl last yesterday actually came and see me, 16 years old, married to, to a, another uh, person that's 27 years old. So that girl, when if the parents are applying for green card or applying for a visa, the parents don't have to say she's in America because she's no longer, she's married. So these are things that I want you to look at the question and answer. But you're right. If you answer yes, who's your brother that's here, you don't have to say she's asylum, but sometimes, and at any time you say yes to any of these important questions, they may deny your visa, but don't lie. But you don't have to tell them everything. Ms. Wong, and by the way, uh, about that, I I know about some people that uh, one of them was here in the United States and father, mother, and brother were traveling back and forth uh, from Venezuela. But in the last two trips that they did to the United States, they stopped the brother and they said, okay, what are you coming to do here? Well, I come with my parents. And what do you come to do here? I come to visit my sister. Uh, oh, no. He said, well, I'm just coming to visit. And they said, what about your sister? She lives here and she's filing for asylum. And he said, yeah, that's right. I didn't say she's not here. I just come to visit her and to bring my parents. So they already know that your family is here. Uh, so 
it, it would be a very bad mistake to lie to an immigration officer because they already know who is in the United States uh, when you are coming to visit someone. Uh, so uh, um, they just need to trust you when you are coming to to the airport. And uh, if they are nice, they are going to let you in. If they are not nice, in a, in a bad mood, they may stop you and give you some trouble. Uh, so I, I hope that nobody gets stuck there at the border. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Uh, more questions uh, that we have here. Uh, Roman says, uh, good morning. I have received an RFE for I-601 for my bar to the United States by the NBC. I came twice. My VAWA is approved and I have a U.S. citizen child. I came twice illegally from Mexico. So uh, I don't actually get the question. The question is, uh, because he came twice, the RFB probably asked, how did you come the first time? When did you leave the second time? You know, it says a perm bar. If you are married to a U.S. citizen with a perm bar, you would not get a green card because it's a Wawa. Wawa may or may not overcome perm bar. But you need to explain the reason why you left and come back very easily. I mean, very seriously, because if you explained it wrong, so because it's a Wawa case, I presume it's a it's a it's a it's an abuse case, abuse from your ex-spouse, abuse. So you have to look at the date of marriage and the date you left and come back. As long as the the perm bar results from the abuse, you should be okay. So really study this case and don't just respond, you know, just because of a response. Every you're dealing with Homeland Security. They have very smart people working there. They're not dumb. And that's a, these are very good questions. So think before you utter, because otherwise now they're saying that we have a material misrepresentation. Material miss means that this RB is serious, right? If you respond to it and you did it right and you told the truth, you may be approved. But on the other hand, what is the truth? It, and and does the, the, so did you leave the country before you met this girl? So it did not result from the Wawa. So the, the, the leaving and coming should have resulted. I mean, if possible, if it's resulting from this abuse or you did not marry her yet. So these are serious questions. I would be careful if I answer. But this is a very good question. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this answer. And uh, if you need uh, advice to do this um, RFE, please get in touch with the attorney, Mark W. Wong. The phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Next question we have is, hi, Mrs. Wong. For a person who entered on parole at the border, is there a work permit that they can file? Yes. So it depends on what kind of parole. If you enter on parole under CBP-1, those are great or enter the first time on a parole. Yes, the parole normally is good for sometimes three months, six months or a year. The CBP-1 sometimes is good for two or three years. So yes, you can apply for parole on that. But it will only be granted up to the duration of that parole. So if it's only a six-month parole, I won't waste the money because it costs $410 to file it. But by the time they approve it, you may get one month. You may not even get it because it, sometimes it takes them seven months for, for approval. And it's only good for six months. You already passed it. They couldn't give it to you under the law. So you won't even get a social. Okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And this person of the, pre, uh, the previous question uh, says, I married here after uh, right after i came back to the united states abuse started right after i came i have been married for 10 years okay so you need to somehow think and answer why did you and talk to your lawyer about this because it depends on the facts you know it depends on why you left why you come back um did someone die i mean yeah because any wawa case the only truth visas and green cards that overcome perm bar is wawa and new visa. That's why these are very serious and good questions. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Uh, we have another interesting question, but uh, you know, I I used not to understand why 
uh, parents in the United States are not uh, qualifying relatives in the eyes of immigration. So I was thinking, why is that? Why a parent, uh, I mean, a son is not a qualifying relative for a father or mother that lives in the United States or that wants to come uh, or to stay legally in the United States if they right. enter. What in Mr. Juan Carlos is talking about is, for example, I lied on my visa application. I came to America, but I kept a copy of my passport on my entry visa. So when you file for the green card, because it's a fraud issue, you need to attach a 601. That's a 601. The other 601A is I'm, I came to America undocumented. I've been here for five years. I married an American citizen, man or woman, and also I, oh, I married a green card man or woman. So I need to go out of America and come back with a green card. That's a 601A. But all of these cases for fraud waiver, for illegal entry waiver, you need a parent or spouse for a pardon for a qualifying whether this child doesn't could not be uh, be the one, but for criminal waiver, the children could be the one. And Mr. Juan Carlos said, but why not? You know, because it's a, it's a whole family, because children should be able. The answer is that's how they wrote the law. And absolutely, if Mr. Biden became president or whoever became president the next term, um, I hope it's Mr. Biden because he's into what we are talking about. Mr. Biden was VP for the last eight years. Before then, he was a congress. He knows the system. You know, he knows what we are complaining about. So hopefully, he'll make that change. That change requires Senate and Congress, and I don't know if they approve it. Because right now, everything that requires Senate and Congress is deadlocked. But you're right. I mean, I don't know why not. That's so stupid. But that's yeah. exactly yeah. what the law says. You're right. Yeah, but I understand now. I understand <laughs> what they say. For example, if if you are my mother and uh, you you need my presence in the United States, you can file for me and you can file the 601. But if I want you to stay here legally, I cannot say that I need you to survive in the United States because I am over 21. What happens in the United States, in the American culture, that what I have learned is that once the kids are grown, they go away from their parents. They move. That's a good them. way to look at it. Yeah, that's a good way yeah, to look they at move, it. They move to other cities. They only see mom or dad uh, every once in a while, every one month or two months. And they cannot say that, I need my mother here in the United States to survive. And the, under, uh, the, the United States understood that, and that's why they, uh, the son is not a qualifying relative to file for 601A if they are uh, filing for some, or, or if someone is filing for them. So it's interesting, but you need to understand the culture. That's a good point. Now that I didn't, and also they put their elderly on a nursing home, and they never, they hardly come. And I know they're very busy. You know, they don't come to. In our culture, oh my gosh, you know, it's a shame to put people in early. I mean, we take care of our own. You know, so yes. it's, it's a different culture. In, right? in Hispanic culture, uh, you have families that leave the two grandparents, the parents, the kids, the grandkids. <laughs> Right. And it drives the neighbors crazy, all these cars, all these noises, all these music, all those smell. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. This is just something I wanted to share because I finally understood what's going on and why that makes sense to the United States uh, government. So uh, let's go ahead, uh, ahead to the next question. And this person says, I have a French passport. Uh, but I was born in Dominica, is one of the islands in the, Car in the Caribbean. If I move into the United States with my ESTA, could my husband file for me if I overstay? Yes, absolutely. It's a legal entry overstay, yes. Okay, so thank you so much for this question. And if you need more uh, information about this or how to do it, uh, please don't hesitate to call the office, the phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. We have a question coming in or on, on our Instagram account. And let me just check real quick. 
here because we have a lot of comments. Um, one of them is um, this weekend was crazy about the questions. Um, I have some questions about immigration. Um, I am from Mexico. I want to go to the United States to work legally. What is the best way to do it? I am a uh, oil engineer, if I can translate okay. that. America needs engineer. Try to get a job. There's a lot of jobs for engineering, uh, you know, on the job sites. Like Indeed is one of them. There's a lot of job sites or engineering job sites. Uh, you can do a TN visa which is very nice because only Canadians and Mexicans have TN visa. So get a TN visa so you can come. TN visas every three years, you can extend, extend. And also because you're from Mexico, you're not from China and India. India and Chinese, it's taking us about five to seven years to 12 years to get green card. Mexicans takes only one and a half to two years to get green card, like a few weeks to get a TN visa. Congratulations. America needs engineers. And you don't even need to be here uh, to apply for the job. You can just uh, send in resumes because I have these employers who call me and say, I got this beautiful resume. How do I hire them and stuff like that? America is in need of people. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong. My kid is making a lot of noise. I apologize for that. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> He's uh, yelling all the way in, the, in his uh, bedroom. Next question, um, how long does USCIS take to make a decision on I-730 after response to RFP? Uh, no, a normal RFP, three weeks to three months. 730 is a problem lately. There was a time, um, especially when Miss Kathy uh, Redman was in charge of 730. She's, she's an old, old friend. 730 should only take two weeks to about six, seven weeks, three months, six months. And then they started this new program of giving the approvals directly to American embassy or consulate, like in China, only Kwanzao gives immigrant visa. But 730, they'll give it to other counselors who release the work load upon, like they'll go to Beijing, Shanghai, and they'll get it in three weeks. So people will come to America in less than one year. Nowadays, 730, sometimes taking three or four years. Um, but you are, the good news is you already have an RFB, which means that you should get an approval three weeks, three months, six, nine months. Um, RFB is good because at least they're adjudicating, they did not forget about you. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this answer. Don't forget that you can call the phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984 is the phone number that you need to call uh, to talk to the attorney, Margaret W. Wong, or to set a consultation uh, in the next days that she's going to be traveling. She has offices in seven cities of the United States, Atlanta, Chicago, Columbus, Cleveland, and then Nashville, New York and Raleigh, North Carolina, and the phone number is just 1-216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. You can also go to our YouTube channel and see her videos that she's uploading frequently, uh, talking about immigration topics, and also her website, imwong.com. You can see it on the bottom of this screen www.imwong.com or more information 216-279-3984 216-279-3984 this one we have time for one more question and this is an interesting interesting one r1 visa includes wife and kids what are they allowed to do as beneficiaries can they study or work Yes, uh, they cannot work, they can study, and they could also go to public school. So, for example, you have a child who is 16 years old, he can, once they got a, a beneficiary visa, they could come to America and go to public school and keep the R2 because R1 is only good for five years maximum. So, once the R1, which is a religious worker visa, after two years, make sure you file tax return on the tax return, say you are a religious worker, don't say you're a truck driver because a lot of religious workers 
different because of different religion, they could also work as as aside from a religious. So you should be a full time uh, religious worker. Number one on the tax return, say you are because there are three type of vocational pro, or potential. Um, professional and ministry. So uh, tell them full-time professional worker for more than two years. Two years on one day, file the 360. There will be a site visit. 360 is the only 360 that you cannot concurrently file the 485. Make sure when the 360 is approved, include your child who's under 21 so the kid doesn't have to go to F1, the student visa. This R2 allows you inside to work, to go to school. You cannot work, um, but you get the green card in less than five years. The whole point of a religious worker is only five years. You either leave America within five years or get the green card in less than five years. So religious worker, sometimes it's not fair for the children because I've done so many religious worker. The children age out and now they're stuck with no visa when the parents already have green cards. Okay, Ms. Wong, this... Uh is the same person asking other questions and says, what happens if the pastor that filed for me passes away, the pastor has cancer? I'm sorry. So the whole thing about religion, this question happens a lot, not just he passed away, you know, he went to another uh, ministry who went. So as long as the ministry is the same denominational, you could switch to another church because it's not like an H1 where it's employer specific, location specific, county specific, salary specific. R1, you, as long as denominational and you can switch, but you still need to do a new L1. But more than that, R1 could not be and should not have been been filed by just a pastor it should be with the approval of the board of directors so so i don't know if they're stopping to pay you but you need to go to the board of the religious organization and then uh and talk to them and continue our one just because the 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 pastor died does not affect the ministry does not affect more than that they need you now because your mentor died they need you to carry on the mission so talk to the board of directors hopefully they'll keep you on payroll two years on one day file for the green card i mean the 360 and then the green card thank you so much miss wong and our time is up for today thank you so much for your answers and for uh, clarifying so many questions today and looking forward to see you next Wednesday in the morning show in Spanish in our Facebook in Espanol. Thank you so much and have a good lunch and take care. And Mr. Juan Carlos, if I can make one more comment, yeah. when you say my email, my show, it should be really our show. You are the one who produces for us. You and your team up there. Mr. Juan Carlos has been with us for a long time. And thank you. It's our thank show. Thank you so much. Thank you. thank you so much. Our show with the attorney Margaret W. Wong. See you next time, Ms. Wong, in our show on Wednesday at 9.30 in the morning Eastern time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Don't forget that uh, the phone number that you need to call is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. Is the phone number that you need to call in order to talk to the attorney Margaret W. Wong, who has over 46 years of experience working and helping thousands of families uh, to get an immigration relief. Thank you so much and see you next time.